In today's video, we're talking about dry suits, how to fit them, considerations, and how to buy one on a budget. Vamanos. Welcome to our channel, Asul Unlimited, where we teach all things scuba diving. My name is Sarah, and I have a very special video planned for you guys today because one of my best friends, Megan, joined me to talk about her experience with buying a dry suit. When making a big purchase like a dry suit, it's always nice to get firsthand experience from fellow divers. So I got together with her and just asked her opinion on how to get into a dry suit, how to start dry suit diving, even if our budget isn't super forgiving. This video is a little bit different from ones that I've done in the past because it's more of a conversation with one of my good friends. So sorry for the bad jokes but you guys are used to that by now, right? I think so. Before we get to that conversation, I wanna give a big shout out to our sponsor, EcoRoots. I'll talk more about them at the end of the video. So today we're gonna talk about dry suits with my friend, Megan. Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> Sarah and I met through a friend, actually the person who was my instructor. So I got certified in 2011, 2012. And I think we met in San Diego the first time and then no. we met the second time in Catalina. No, the first time was a night dive in Morro Bay. Oh, I really? remember that. Coleman's Beach? Yeah, because I remember being really awkward and like shaking your hand, but you went in for a hug. And so we did like this awkward handshake. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> and this was pre-COVID times. Yeah. <laughs> so it was just me being really awkward because that's how I am. <laughs> no, never. <laughs> <laughs> Diving since 2012-ish and mainly just shore dives, boat dives in California has done a couple places internationally and then over the past year after diving in Monterey far too many times and losing sensations in my fingers and toes, I opted to go and take the dry suit course and purchase my dry suit and I am so happy about it. Yay! You mentioned cold digits, yes. cold limbs. Um, is there any other reason why you switched to dry suit diving? Mainly for the cold. I would say that pros and cons of dry suit diving, you stay warmer at depth longer because you're not being saturated by water and completely encapsulated by my tri-laminate suit with my undergarments and I'm nice and cozy and it's also very versatile so with the dry suit I have I'm able to layer up so if I'm doing something that's like 50 degrees I don't have to wear as much as if I'm going to be diving something closer to like 42 degrees. A uh, downside is it can be a little cumbersome it can take a little bit longer to put on your gear but it's also easy to travel with because it really rolls up tight. Nice yeah sometimes taking those thick uh, wetsuits I know I have a seven mil uh, semi-dry and that thing takes up a lot of space. How did you figure out what you wanted to buy? So I dove first into research on the internet and I read a few forums and got to know that the two most popular types of dry suit are the trilaminate or the trilam. It is three different layers of materials. I don't know what they are. And they press them together super thin. And it's like a hard shell or the crushed neoprene. Keeps you waterproof and it gives you more insulation than a trilaminate suit does because you already have that thickness to keep you cozy. For me, choosing the trilaminate again with the layering, I felt like I might be diving up and down the coastline. So I might be needing to layer up more than I might need to for a neoprene where I might not be able to stuff as many layers underneath me. Figured out that I wanted to go with the trilaminate model and I went to a couple different dive shops and I live here in San Luis Obispo so we have two dry suit, no, two shops, two scuba shops. One of them definitely does not carry dry suits and I'm pretty <laughs> sure the other one definitely doesn't carry dry suits. <laughs> what are you talking about? We're so well equipped We're so around well here. <laughs> Let's talk about... Yeah, there's that like a little shop in Pismo I've never been to. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I'm pretty sure they definitely don't have dry suits. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they definitely, definitely don't. don't have dry suits. <laughs> so calling around to different shops, it was really hard to find any shops that really carried a whole line of different dry suit makers, or like Hollis or Booba Pro or Aqualung. It seems like each shop is kind of tied up with their own brand. Uh, so I hopped down to a shop and just kind of picked their brain on the different suits that they had and I did some online research. I think after going to the shop and talking to a couple divers, they were able to say which suits they liked the best. And being that I dive in the area, I figured probably like what they like. Mm -hmm. Snap. How you say airplane in sign language? Oh, there we go. If 
got a lot of noise pollution. Yeah. It's this industrial area. Great for van life. <laughs> this is my dry suit setup. I've got the Hollis DX300. It's an older model, complete with an even older <laughs> set of undergarments, which were highly desirable because of the price on eBay. So as Abby's discovering, I chose to go with a suit that had the silicon seals on it. So the whole neck piece can pop out, stretches around your neck, along with the cuffs here, the wrist seals, they pop out. So the dry suits come with a couple different types of seals. Silicon is really malleable to your body. When you flex your wrist, it sticks pretty well. Uh, another version of this would be latex. Folks have a lot of latex allergies though, so not as popular. And then another common type of seal you might see is neoprene. A little bit more seepage <laughs> with the neoprene. My, my suit just inevitably has a little bit of seepage, but I did unknowingly choose uh, a backup method. So my undergarment has cuffs made of neoprene on both the wrist and on the ankles. So that way when I get a little bit of water coming in, this kind of soaks it up. And the way that my garment is constructed is it doesn't actually get wet at the core. I also went for the cross zip. So I have only one zipper here. A lot of other suits might have two zips. Uh, mine is plastic. Older versions might come in brass. So a single cross zip makes it easy for me to put on and off by myself. And then it has this nice Velcro <laughs> protector that goes on top. Um, another version that might be seen is straight across the chest. It's a lot easier to get in when it's across your whole body. Um, it's pretty cumbersome inside. And then another option is the back zip, which is really hard to do. I also should show inside comes with a very sexy, wonderful set of suspenders or bracers you might call them if you're in the uk so when you gear up you put one foot in and the other fling these over your shoulders and you're set for the day this suit has two gigantic pockets that have double layers of velcro on the outside and on the inside so if you come across anything like an old beer bottle while diving, stuff it in your pocket, take it up to the surface. A lot of more technical divers will put their gear in there too. And I also got the integrated booties. So these are just crushed neoprene that are already sewn in to the suit. First, I wrap my foot up in a really fashionable hiking sock. I have not gone completely over the edge with my outfitting yet. So I just use my regular old neoprene boots, stuff my foot in there. A lot of people do have custom dry suit booties, which look a little cooler. The soles are more sturdy, not as much of a squeeze on your foot. You got the perfect little assistant there. Oh no. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you don't miss any of our future videos. What kinds of things did you need to think about for fit? So I ordered my suit based on the sizing chart that Hollis offered. They don't have a woman's suit line or a male, a men's suit line. It's just a unisex suit, which is great and easy. So I ordered based on the sizing chart. And then when I went to do my course for the dry suit, they fitted me for the seals. Mm. And they immediately found out that the standard size seals were too big for me. So I had Surprise. to go for the smaller size. <laughs> um, Shocker. <I> know. <laughs> Five foot six, still like wearing child's clothes. <laughs> <laughs> but part of the seal fit is also if your seals are too tight, it can cause difficulties with your circulation. They have this nice test where they put on your neck seal and then they wait for a minute to see what happens. And then they take your pulse here and here oh. and they're checking to see if your face turns red. That's that's good. What are they checking for? The carotid sinus reflex. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they did. You did take the course, so that's that's good that you know that. <laughs> I also looked it up right before you came. Oh, <laughs> in my book. <laughs> nice. We'll talk about what that is and the feel theology physiology physiology behind that in a future video did it come with those smaller seals or did you have to custom order those oh no i swapped them out at the shop oh okay yeah there's a tool that comes with your interchangeable cuffs 
and it's a piece of plastic that fits into the other piece of plastic and you just pop them out and then kind of stitch them back in. Are they like, I just think of the AirPod like headset things, kind of like, like that, that, like, and then you just like put the right size in? Sure. No? That's, that's all. Or like a reference. crocheting circle where you have to stretch your, maybe it's not even crocheting, stitching, needlework. We're getting old. <laughs> <laughs> that those are the references <laughs> when i, I used it. to do my stitch work my cross stitch you have to stretch the fabric across the circular seal and then press it in with a tool <laughs> oh, i love it you mentioned that you tried out some dry suits and then you made a purchase how did you do the purchase did you buy new did you buy second hand yeah i opted for new um, they were talking about at the shop that you can get away with a used suit and you can get a pretty good deal on places like eBay or Craigslist or even the consignment store. But if something is wrong with your seal or something is wrong with your zipper, the cost is going to be pretty big. That also was a newer dry suit diver and wanting to feel confident in my first few dives, I just felt more comfortable buying new. So I did find a suit that was a little bit older model so it's not a 2020 edition I think it's like 2018 2019 and I called the shop wanted to vet them to make sure they're a real operation and they were thank you Texas uh, <laughs> just for this one yeah for, uh, <laughs> it's a sign of the times now like, uh, it's okay <laughs> we probably shouldn't put that in your video yeah. you're gonna get like hate I know it's fine. I get hate anyways. Yeah. But I, I called the shop and they delivered. They said it was brand new. Nobody used it before. It's a warmer area, so not as many people are diving dry there. Now that you've done a few dives, what are like the must-have accessories? It's my undergarment, really. Do you wear your regular gloves? I did buy a newer hood for this, I will say. Before, on my neoprene suit, I had like a gigantic skirt. Hmm. And when you put that on top of a dry suit, it just flies up around your neck like a clown i kind of wish that you had worn those in san diego no. it's nice <laughs> that would have been fun <laughs> so i did get a hood that has a shorter skirt on it and they do make dry suit hoods which just kind of go like under the chin and they're super warm i will say that i didn't really realize it when i was buying all of my gear but everything is black my gloves, my boots, my hood. I am totally invisible underwater. So I got the brightest hood. This is my favorite. So everyone can see me when I go diving. Ooh. <laughs> Not only is it vibrantly orange, it has reflectors on it. And they work, let they me work, tell you. Yeah, <laughs> if someone shines their torch on you, I'm a light show. Yeah, yeah. you. It, it worked really well. I, yeah. I like it. The shorter skirt flies a little around a little bit but not too bad so with choosing your gear often i've seen a lot of other dry suit divers diving with a back plate and because you do need more weight to get underneath because your whole body is filled up with water i mean air filled up with air <laughs> <laughs> um, so the back plate naturally pushes you down with your back inflator i think each back plate naturally weighs about like seven or eight pounds so you don't need to strap as much on. I did opt just to keep a vest because I get to do warmer dives, so I like to put on my vest, my neoprene. I'm not as trim, but it like it. it's cozy. <laughs> We've talked a little bit about things that you have to buy and equipment that you need to have. Like, what can you get by with on a budget? You can get by with just the dry suit <laughs> and the accessory inflator hose. So you do need to add that to your setup. It doesn't match your inflator hose, so that's nice, so you won't screw that up. But when I go diving, I just wear this sweater, these leggings, I throw in some socks, and I, like, again, I got my undergarment for under $100. Other ones out there, the best ones are upwards of $500. I wish I could try that out. <laughs> what are the price points that you were seeing when you were purchasing? Like, what yeah. was the range? I would say anywhere from 1000 to 3000 or up. This is why I don't have one. <laughs> It's, it's fine. Yeah. It's totally fine. I've gotten tougher. San Diego, I did not complain once. I was cold. I layered up when I got back in. I'm proud of myself, yeah. but it's oh. also out of necessity because I can't buy a dry suit anytime soon. Subscribe to her channel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can get me to a dry suit. Ah, uh, one day. I forgot one big pro about oh. the dry suit. Yeah. Is not only does it keep you warm underwater, but between your dives. 
That's it the is big the one. fastest recovery. Yeah. Compared to being wet and just throwing wet. a towel over yourself or throwing hot water down your shirt. Well, thanks for sitting on the ground and getting covered in dog hair. Yeah. Thanks I for having it. me. And Abby. <laughs> and uh, we need to go diving again soon. Okay. Let me know. Okay. I'll bring my suit. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to join me? What's our outro? Your outro. So. I watch your videos. I swear I know it. <laughs> it's okay. Sarah. <laughs> it's Hashtag. <laughs> Dives in the ocean. She's one of my best friends. She doesn't watch my videos. Wow. I watch them. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell. Let's check out our sponsor. You guys know by now that we are big fans of sustainability here at Asul Unlimited. That's why we work with brands like EcoRoots. EcoRoots focuses on sustainably made products that can replace your everyday household items. Here you can see me using their bamboo toothbrush and tablet toothpaste. At first, it's a little strange getting used to toothpaste in tablet form, but this stuff is so good. It foams and cleans just like your standard paste that comes in a plastic tube. And everything is made from natural ingredients. Make sure to check out their products with the link in the description below and use the code ASUL Unlimited for a discount at checkout. That's about it from us today. If you like this video, give it a big ol' Thumbs up <laughs> and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our future videos. We'll see you next time. You really need a trendy sign off. Like what? Like something Azuli. Azuli. Oh my gosh, look at this. I have a lint roller. Look at this. Do you, do you see yourself? Look at that. Are you ashamed? <laughs> no. She does not care. No shame. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have South Park stickers all over? These. Okay. I mean, that makes sense, I guess. I get them hydro inspected every year. Every year? Yeah, I have to be. Otherwise, the shops don't fill your tanks. Hydro. Yeah. Stop. It's insane. There's a little sticker. Sorry. No, it's visual every oh, year. Visual, you're right. Okay. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> visual inspected. Yeah, visually inspected every year. Where do I get and then people? hydro is every five. Oh. I wonder when I got hydro. Uh, it should have a date on here. Probably. Oh, it would be. The last one was nine nineteen. The same as. Yeah. They really stamp it here. Yeah, nine nineteen. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Not today. Yeah. So you're good for, what, another three years? Yeah. You want me to look there or talk to you? Uh, if you happen to look at the camera, just try and look at the black like nothingness over there. Because otherwise, when you just like look at yourself, you look a little bit I silly. I look so dumb. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I notice when the influencers do this that they're like, oh. <laughs> yeah. I shouldn't talk bad about the influencers. You, you shouldn't. They Your have livelihood very, um, is based on that, too. Yeah. I, I pretend to be an influencer. <laughs> I don't really know what that lifestyle is, actually. Dun, 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 dun,